want to be able to spend all my time with my kids without people looking at me or calling me names. I just want to not be shy. <laughs> I want to be who I am. Jennifer Hiles was born with an arteriovenous malformation, or AVM, a jumbled mass of arteries and veins in her head and on her face, which would hemorrhage at any moment, possibly fatally. And now she has had tissue expanders placed under the skin of her face. Just like a big balloon with saline inside, basically like breast implants just in my face. As these are enlarged over the course of two months by adding more liquid, they will allow extra skin to grow, which will be used as grafts when she has her AVM removed in May. They're going to remove all my AVM and all the bad tissues, which is all the pink, and remove my nose and build me a new nose out of my rib. And then since all this damaged tissue will be gone, they'll need something to replace it with. So remove these expanders and I'll have a whole bunch of skin to work with. So I'll have a normal white colored face. I don't know if I'm gonna look like normal. Like I don't want to look perfect. I just want to look normal. <laughs> I guess we'll see. I can see past like her outside figure because she's so beautiful on the inside. It doesn't really matter about what's on the outside to me. It's kind of scary to think about like what she's gonna look like because <laughs> like who knows like it's just like a mystery so it's gonna be weird to get used to but it's not gonna determine like the way I act or feel around her. Like I'm always gonna think she's beautiful. It's gonna almost get 100 pounds. 100 pounds? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> my Probably this big. When Jennifer was born, she had a birthmark, which soon grew worse. I started to bleed all the time when I was like three months old, so I would always have to get blood transfusions. They had tried to cauterize her veins, blood vessels, to see if that would make it stop, and that, would not, that wouldn't even work for her. There'd be times where I was terrified to go to sleep at night because her nose would bleed in the middle of the night with her not even crying or anything. And I'd wake up and there'd just be blood covered all over the sheets, it got down her stomach and that would make her really sick. Um, there was a point in time where she got so sick and was so pale that she threw up a ton of blood and I had to call 911. I almost lost my daughter. It was the scariest day of my life. She only had like two pints of blood in her body left. They had to give her a blood transfusion. Although Jennifer was officially diagnosed with AVM age 12 and has had several surgeries, including the removal of benign tumors, she's still at risk from blood loss. This basically makes my nose bleed all the time, makes my gums bleed, and has completely eroded the bone line in my teeth. And if my teeth fell out, then I could bleed to death, so that really impacts my life a lot. It makes my throat bleed. It makes me have headaches like all the time because of all the arteries in my head just constantly pounding. Her condition has meant she's faced a lifetime of unwanted attention. And this can still be a problem when she picks her children up from school. As soon as all the first graders come out the door, one of them looked over at me and he just yelled, what's wrong with her face? What's wrong with that lady's face? And they would say it's gross and sick and be like, whose mom is that? Last time they did that, I waited for my daughter to come outside and I didn't even say anything to her, give her a hug like I normally do. I just walked straight past her, like into the school because I felt like I was gonna cry or like pass out. Like I'm more worried about them making fun of my daughter than they are me. I don't want her to be affected by it. These kids can be mean. There are days where I feel really overwhelmed and really tired of like everything I have to go through just to feel good again. And I know that I do a really good job at like tricking everybody because I always like try to pretend like I'm really positive or be really positive. And so I guess I kind of feel alone in that sense. Like I just try to tell people that everything's going good and be positive about stuff, but it's really hard to do that. 
Like, I kind of feel like a big liar because I tell everyone, like, everything's going good. As she prepares for her operation, Jennifer has explained to her children about the procedures she's undergoing. I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to cut the pink off your face. They're going to cut your nose off. Yeah, that's Blood most... everywhere. I kind of told the girls, like, what's going to happen and how it's going to look mm -hmm. and how it might be kind of scary for them. And Marlena, like, instantly started crying and she said she didn't want to see me like that, but then she don't want to be without me for a long time either. Once her operations in May are complete, she hopes the bleeding will stop and her appearance will be more normal. I'm praying and hoping that she can live a happier and healthier life where she can go out in public where people won't stare at her and think, you know, she, where she don't feel like she's any different from anybody else. If I don't ever have to worry about, like, bleeding or hemorrhaging or going to the school and having kids not call me names while I pick up Marlena if I want to go have lunch with her or all that, that would be like the happiest thing ever. <laughs> I don't even know what that would feel like, but it would just be really awesome.